Hello, and welcome to this session on using Ansible with Checkpoint APIs. I'm your host, Dwayne, and I appreciate you having me here today. In this episode, we'll expand our playbooks to do some more interesting things, like adding and modifying multiple objects with Ansible loops. In the first section, I'll show you some mechanics of Ansible loops, including how Ansible treats the various components of your list. In the second section, we'll apply these mechanics to do some real work with our Checkpoint Management Server objects. As part of this exercise, we'll start learning about Jinja templating and how to access the content of variables. We'll make use of those YAML data types from episode three. So grab yourself a snack, a beverage, and let's get started. Let's get loopy. Well, hopefully not too loopy. We still need to pay attention. Ansible can iterate through a list of items within a single task to run the same operation on all items in that list. Here's a YAML list that we'll be using for the first demonstration. This list won't be named in a variable, so it's called an anonymous list, a list with no name. This will be a static list attached to a task to keep things simple at first. The loop keyword is the operator to iterate through a list. A loop can be attached to almost any task, mostly, but not all tasks. The value of the loop keyword must be a list and only a list and never anything that's not a list. List, list, list. Here's a task to show how a loop is used. The anonymous list is used as the value for the loop. The loop keyword is at the same indentation level as the debug module. This means loop is not a parameter of the task because it is a task level operator. In this task, you see a new keyword named item. What is item? Unless otherwise specified, Ansible will assign a temporary variable to the current loop iteration element. By default, this temporary variable is called item. Within the task, you can use the implicit variable item to reference the value of the current element in the list. To put it more succinctly, item is just a pointer in the list and loop moves that pointer with each iteration. Here's what this looks like when the playbook runs. For starters, let's jump down to the end and see the play recap. Notice how many tasks were ran. One. But clearly in the output above, we see three things happen. That's how a loop works when attached to a task. Each iteration of the loop does not replicate the task, but the task is repeated. I know, I know, slight difference in semantics. Going back to the loop task, you can see each iteration. Ansible also tells us the value of item during each iteration. Item equals red, item equals green, item equals blue. Since I used the debug module and gave it the var parameter, the debug module is printing the entire contents of that specified variable. In this case, the variable is the ephemeral item variable. That first line, Ansible loop var, is something we're going to see again in just a few minutes. This tells Ansible the name of the ephemeral variable. By default, it is item. The second line in the output shows the value of the variable. By now, you know it's the current iteration through that loop. This repeats again for each item in the anonymous list. Of course, you're already thinking, but this isn't scalable, and it's certainly not sustainable. There must be a better way, and there is, Kevin. But hang on, I have a few more things to cover first. Debugging with var is quite unsightly. Let's fix that first. This will introduce you to your first look at Jinja and variable templating. Here's the next version of our task. Looks quite similar as before, but the debug piece is different. Instead of var, we use the msg parameter. msg means message. This lets you display any arbitrary text as output to the console. Literally, a debug message. The contents of the message looks familiar. You can see item is in there, but it is surrounded by double open and double closed curly braces, and it is quoted. These markers are from the Jinja 2 templating language. Jinja is a Python templating library you can use for all sorts of cases, and we'll see more of these cases in later episodes. Ansible uses Jinja as a mechanism to dereference variables and access their content. Either single quotes or double quotes are allowed here, but I strongly suggest you use double quotes. In a few episodes toward the end, you'll see examples of why when we get into some more elaborate playbooks. Here's what the playbook run looks like with this version of debug. Just as before, one task is ran, but repeatedly, not replicated. You can see each item is assigned to the same values as before. However, the debug module's output is much cleaner now. 
It only shows the value of the list item from each loop iteration. Much nicer. However, we can still do better. Remember that Ansible loop bar in the output from the first playbook run? We can change the name of the variable Ansible uses for the loop iteration items. This is done with the loop control parameter. Loop control has several options and the one we want is, can you guess it, loop bar. Here's what that looks like. Yes, I'm reverting back to using var for the debug module again, just to show how Ansible sees this internally. Let's run this playbook. Hey, some things have changed. Ansible loop var shows the name of our custom variable. You can see the variable is now created and you can see the value of my var. Oh, but look, there's that item again. I thought we fixed that. Yes, yes we did. This line is called the label. This is Ansible showing the current value of the loop iteration and this label is always displayed as item equals. Internally, within the loop, your custom loop bar variable is just an alias for item. Nothing is wrong here. Speaking of labels, that's the last thing I want to cover. You can adjust the output of that label line. Another parameter of loop control is, wait for it, label. You can use any string of text here you want. However, for your own sake, you want it to be something meaningful. Ansible will print this label text for each iteration of the loop. So here's our next playbook. I'm switching back to message now and using a Jinja statement to access the contents of my var in the loop. I'm setting label with a static string just for illustration. Here's what that looks like. Much as you'd expect. Now we know item equals is the label. There's our static label which is, of course, not very informative since it is also repeated for every loop iteration. We see the contents of my var in the debug output. So that begs the question, can we make our label be customized and read the way we want? Hmm, let's find out. For a label, you can use Jinja templating along with static text. There's a gotcha in here though. If you mix static text with Jinja, you really should quote the entire string, not just the ginger part. For some situations, you can get away with quoting just the ginger part, but for other situations, you are required to quote the whole string. To keep things consistent and for your own sanity, get in the habit of always quoting the entire string. This will avoid surprises later. Last edit for this playbook and we're done. Here I mix static and variable text. You can use the name of your loop variable in the label if you like, and in future episodes, we almost always will. Here's the final playbook run. Looks good. That's all for our intro to loops and lists. Okay, we have a loop through a list with a custom variable and custom labels. Nice. But wait, didn't we say this wasn't sustainable? Wasn't there a better way? And aren't we here for checkpoint management APIs? Well, now that we can access variables with Jinja... Recalling the anatomy of playbooks from episode 5, our playbook is missing a piece. There's no vars or vars underscore files section. Let's add one now. The vars section is where we can specify variables for this specific play. Instead of an anonymous list, I'll assign that list to a variable making it a named list. For the task, instead of a static or anonymous list, we can specify a variable to use its contents instead. We can't just write the variable name, Ansible won't know what to do with it, and it'll be a syntax error. Instead, we need to dereference the variable, and we do that with Jinja. Let's see what we get. Ta-da! Same result as before, except now, the task is entirely adaptive. No more changes to the task, but if we change contents of the variable, the task runs the exact same way, but using whatever content we throw at it. Now let's apply this to some checkpoint things. To do this, we need to stretch a bit. If we wanted to add a list of host objects, what are the required parameters for the host module to add a new host? Is it just one parameter? Two? Three? The API documentation says to add a host, we need a name and an IP address. 
Yet so far, our list has just been one string value per list item. We need more content in our list. To do that, we need a dictionary. Here's the dictionary we will use. Although you can use any name you want for these dictionary keys, whatever you choose, be consistent everywhere. If you can't be consistent, then you need to refactor and adjust some things. Our dictionary contains these keys of interest, a name key and an IP address key. The IP address key can be used for both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. You can have separate keys for these if you prefer. We'll expand this dictionary later. This is only the beginning. Any given object of any variety is described as a dictionary. So the terms object and dictionary are often used interchangeably. Consider yourself warned or informed. These two dictionaries represent just one object each. However, we need a list of these objects. So let's do just that and assign this list to a variable name. Going back to our Ansible task, we'll attach this named list to our task loop and make a few more adjustments. Since we have a list of dictionaries, things will now change when accessing the keys and values of each dictionary referenced by the loop iteration item. We can choose to use the default loop variable item or we can use our own variable. Doesn't really matter either way yet. If you wanted to see what this looks like before we run the checkpoint module, then you can use the debug module again. The dictionary keys are accessed using either dot notation or bracket notation. Dot notation is easier and faster, but it has some restrictions. However, bracket notation is much safer. In this loop task, using the myVar loop variable, you can see the names of the dictionary keys are accessed as elements of the myVar variable. This is how we will map elements of our dictionary object onto the checkpoint object modules. Speaking of which, here's one single task that adds or edits a checkpoint host object, but it's called in a loop with a named list. The size of this list is up to you. It can be a list of 1, 20, 50, or 100 dictionary objects. Try not to go much more than that, however, for different reasons. This is the complete playbook. The var section has a network OS, API key string, and our named list. The task section does a few things. It gets all of the hosts on the management API server, print that entire list using the message parameter and Jenga statements, call the checkpoint host module in a loop with the named list, a custom variable, and a custom label. Get the new list of hosts on the API server, print the entire list the same way as before, Publish the changes to the database. Here's what this playbook does. Ooh, did you notice that label line? Here it is again if you missed it. Can you figure out why? Feel free to pause here if you need a moment to take a look again. Here's the task again with the output. This label is printing the entire dictionary from the list iteration. I'll leave this as an exercise for you to play with on your own to figure out how to make that label line print just the name of the dictionary or perhaps the IP address or both, but print it in a more friendly way, mixing static and variable content. Do what you wish, have fun with it. I added a publish task so you can see the results in Smart Console. You're welcome to instead use a discard task if you're just practicing. For that warm and fuzzy feeling, here's the result in Smart Console. Nice, yeah? Oh, I know what you're thinking now. What if there's an error? Can we get the before and after comparisons? We're going to need a bigger boat. Can I loop multiple tasks together? Well, these are different problems to solve, and we will solve them in future episodes. That's all for today. Be sure to commit this to your Git repo before you leave. There we go. Playbooks with intelligence and access to the variables with Jinja. Everything is looking good. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below so you know when new content is available. Please leave a comment to let me and others know how this video helped you. Join me in the next video and we'll start working with variables and external data files and learn what to do when the data goes missing.